Jesus did not rise from his cross. Jesus rose from his tomb. And the first words, be not afraid from the angel. And I've said this so many times in our parish, 365 times the phrase, be not afraid, occurs in the Bible. One for every day of the year. Do not be afraid. I say to you, women, do not be afraid. You are the first proclaimers of the resurrection. Do not be afraid. Christ rose from the tomb. And so we cannot expect to be delivered from our crucifixions, but rather to be victorious over our entombments. The hurts, the crucifixions, these are inevitable. But belief in Jesus' resurrection promises that the effects of our pain will not be permanent. Crucifixion is relatively swift, but tombs can endure long after the nails have been removed. A sharp word, an angry look can crucify, but the tomb of rejection where we may find ourselves can last for years. Rejection, suspicion, distrust, anxiety, fear, inadequacy, selfishness, these build tombs more solid than those made of stone. How are we to rise? We must face our death as Christ did. For if we have died with Christ, we will be ready to open our tomb and rise with him. But we'll have to do a little bit of digging. Tombs, my friends, are deep and dark. But shovel by shovel, we can rise by being willing to try again and again and again. It also helps to name the tomb we're buried in, to say, my tomb is fear, and I'm willing to leave it. We have to recognise like Mary and acknowledge where pain has buried us. The dolores, the wounds Mary held, she will rise from these. And like us, all of us will refuse to give in to it. Now, it may take a while, especially if we've buried many things deep. And we need to take the courage and the humility to maybe hand over a shovel and ask for help. Therefore, if we rise above ourselves, we prove again God's power and promise to the sceptical tomb-bound world. We can invite and encourage others that there is life beyond the tomb. Let our alleluia not be a solo voice, but a call for others to resurrection through Christ's love. Each time I withheld a smile, refused a helping hand, broke a promise, refused to socially distance myself, we help bury someone. We can begin to unearth others by being Jesus' voice, to carry out his mission by sharing our tomb experience, to reassure others, do not be afraid. Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection. Martha, do you believe this? As he healed and preached, Jesus carried this conviction with him through betrayal as well as palm waving. I am the resurrection had much more to do with Jesus' life than it did with his death. He rose from the tomb on Easter because he had practiced rising like a buried seed from the tomb of self-concern every day. He didn't just rise, he is the resurrection. And if we are to follow him, we are called to be the resurrection to others as well. This proclamation, Pope Paul VI often said, is our deepest identity. 
We are called to be unconditional forgiveness in our community's life. Resurrection, after all, belongs to those who have died, to those who have known despair, to those who have grown tired, to those in self-isolation, to those who have been betrayed and yet have left those tombs to begin again. Easter, therefore, belongs to those who have come to realise that no tomb is final and so can celebrate life even while carrying the holes of crucifixion. Those who really celebrate resurrection know that there will be other tombs from which they must rise from. They know that they will be consuming bushfires, there'll be flooding plains, there'll be car accidents, there'll be viruses. All this is part of our world. They know that there must be others who will need help to leave their tombs, that mental health entraps them in. But we pray that they will continue to rise with others more often, much more than once a year at Easter, for resurrection comes every day. Do not be afraid. If we have hope in the resurrection, then we are an Easter people. And Easter, therefore, becomes a way, a truth, and a life. Alleluia. <laughs>